How do you end up dealing with Wild and Out? How do you end up dealing with 85 South guys like a Chico Bean? Uh, how do you end up meeting? Did you you and Ricky Smiley ever do some stuff together? I'm touring with Ricky right now. Okay, let's talk about this stuff, man. Let's get it out here. So, shout out to Ricky Smiley. Shout out to Ricky Smiley, man. Uh, praying for you, dog. I, yeah, yeah. For you. He, he definitely been going through something lately. I was about to say, I went down there to uh, Birmingham and linked up with a few of his uh, people that he rocked with, huh? Mm-hmm. But let's talk about it. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Hey, man, man beard make it. a man look grown. It I gotta pull us. you back, man. I gotta pull you back. I gotta talk about your career. I gotta talk about your accomplishments. My people need to know there's a lot of people that wanna, you know, they wanna do comedy. They wanna be like you. You yeah. know what I mean? You gotta give them the blueprint, print Black Run, to where they can learn, man. And you that, you the, you the go-through guy. <laughs> Don't do what I did. How long you been doing Why it now? 12 that? years. 12 years. You waited too years. late or something? Or? No, well, that. I felt like I waited about five years too late. But that's just my own little personal thing yeah. that I got to deal with with myself because mm-hmm. I, I never thought I was good enough to do this. Like, I'm funny at the barbecue. I can pull a girl. I'm good at a job. But professionally, I never considered myself a real comedian. Mm-hmm. Even after I was the best in Dallas and had been for years, I doubted myself. Mm. It, it's what took me so long to get on the road. It's what took me so long to get into competitions. Well, hold on. Where did that stem from? Were as you, as a child, were you raised like that to be fearful? No, it's it. it, it was, you know, people say subconsciously, like your mama said something, and you see kids hold that and feel you know self confidence is not there because of that. No, that that wasn't where my fear lied. Where did it come? My fear from? lied in in the fact that. When you go into something that's popularity based, you have to be what people like. And when you come up being something most people don't like, that that gives you the confidence to be yourself. Mm-hmm. But it also puts you in a place where you're scared to go where you have to get validation from others. Mm. So in comedy, as funny as you may think you are, you got to go on that stage and the people in that room are going to validate you. Mm-hmm. They're going to validate whether or not that's a good joke or not. Mm-hmm. So I had to to deal with that. And then after growing up in church and you watching people that suck still get clapped for because it's the proper thing to do. Mm-hmm. Then you watch something like American Idol and a person like Simon tell a person, I don't know why you even thought to do this with your life. Right, well, forward. it's because they've been lied to the last 25 mm-hmm. years while they was at church saying, baby, you could be a star. You need to be in Hollywood. You need to be on TV. So I never let the locals people love for me give me an overinflated ego even though they were seeing something in me I didn't see in myself. Like, no, bro, you got it. I'm like, I just got it to you. Because if I go to New York, if I go to L.A., I go to Chicago, I go to Atlanta, places where comedy was supposedly mm-hmm. made mm-hmm. and validated, if I don't have it to them, I don't got it. Is it different in every state? Like when you're telling your jokes or when you go different places, do you have to switch up your jokes a little bit? Depends on where you are to cater to the people? Some things are regional. Okay. Certain logo, lingo, you know, uh, certain words that they call this, they call it something else in mm-hmm. a certain, in another part of and town. And you have to learn all of that. Right. Like down here, we say soda water. Mm. It's pop in other mm-hmm. places. It's Coke in other places. You know what I mean? So you got to learn little, little interchangeable stuff like that. But for any comedian that's starting out, get away from telling jokes that are funny to the people around you because that's a joke you can't use nowhere else. Mm-hmm. Get away from using stores and places of business that are local to you. Because nobody else knows it. Ain't no Kroger in certain parts of the world. Right. You know what I mean? Ain't no Piggly Wiggly. Ain't no Win Dixie. You know what I mean? Like, if you ain't never been to Chicago, you've never heard of Jewel Osco. Mm-mm. But that's that's their grocery store. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So get get away from that kind of stuff so then you don't compartmentalize yourself as as an act from this place. Mm-hmm. A local. Like, I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm not a local comedian. I'm just mm-hmm. from here. I'm not a right. Dallas comedian. I'm, right. a, I'm a national, international comedian that's from Dallas. Mm-hmm. But when you, how did you first get your, your you know, stem your relationship with something, like I said, the heavy hitters that you've already, and I, I asked you this, and y'all keep going off subject. Yeah, because he sorry. told me to list my credits and my resume yeah. to tell people. I'm sorry. People so can, let, me, let, me, let me run it so down real, real yeah, quick. Like, and I really want to just dive into how you met them, the process. Because That's why I say I don't, I don't want nobody to take my route. Yeah, but the process for you to meet these people, 
for you to be this writer, mm -hmm. for you to be this guy that stands on stage proud today, that was a process. Yes. And we need to hear the process. That's all I'm saying. So uh, it, it may not be a pretty picture, but no. we don't need to give people a pretty picture because a lot of times it's not going to be a pretty picture. Mm -hmm. So let's be real with the people so that they can learn. Because there's some guys that they, they don't think that they can start at an age like you did as well. Oh, but man. then you give them encouragement. Rodney Dangerfield was in, was in his 40s before he started his comedy wow. career. Sally yeah. Field was 39 before she ever got cast in her first movie. You know mm. what I mean? 51 Savage was 51 before he <laughs> ever went viral. You know what I mean? Ch Two Chains was damn near 40 before his rap career yeah, yeah. really took off. So there is no like no specific time or, or, or time in your life to do something. If it's never too late to go back to college, it's never too late to start a new career path. So it's how old never, were you? I was 25 when I Which started. Which is good. For me, but you, you could have do I was just earlier. grown enough to have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and so when it takes off and you how do you end up dealing with Wild and Out? How do you end up dealing with 85 South guys like a Chico Bean? Uh how do you end up meeting Did you you and Ricky Smile ever do some stuff together? I'm touring Ricky right now. Okay, let's talk about this stuff, man. Let's get it out here. So, shout out to Ricky Smiley. Shout out to Ricky Smiley, man. Uh, praying for you, dog. I, uh, yeah, yeah praying for you. He, he definitely been th going through something lately. I was about to say, I went down there to uh, Birmingham and linked up with a few of his uh, people that he rocked with, huh? Mm -hmm. But let's talk about it. So, shout out to comedian A.G. White okay. from Brooklyn, New York. A.G. White was down uh, performing at the Addison Improv. Nene Lee was doing Fat Tuesdays. Yeah. Shout I out. was a regular at Fat Tuesdays. I'm murdering it. Um, I featured Right before AG went on stage, AG come tell me, dude, you dope. You need to leave Dallas. Year later, AG White comes back. I'm doing that same show. Mm. He said, yo, you been on the road? I said, nah, I ain't, ain't had the chance. I ain't had the money to get out there. He said, yo, if I come back to Dallas <laughs> and, and you haven't you left here. Dallas, lose my fucking number. Wow. Right after that, comedian Mario Torrey from Atlanta comes and performs at uh, Comedian Q. used to do a show called uh, We Got Next. At Hyenas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mario Torrey, headlines. I put, I feature for him. He said, man, if you ever in Atlanta, hit me up. I get a wild hair in my ass one day. Got a cousin that used to live in Atlanta. He said, man, if you ever in Atlanta, you got a place to stay. Got another dude to say, man, if you ever get down to Atlanta, I got $100 for you for every show you do. Wow. That's big. Next thing you know, I done bought myself a. $40 Greyhound ticket to Atlanta. Rode that Greyhound bus 22 hours. Pull up in Atlanta. My man CJ come pick me up. Board me at his house. Go do Mario Torrey's room. Go do all these rooms. Next thing you know, hey man, you funny, bro. Hey, you need to come here. So when you go to a city and you wreck, all the comedians, hey, got another spot for you. With, you want $50 some chicken wings? I, I got a spot for you tomorrow. I got a room I host. I got $50 in chicken wings for you so you can accumulate nice little rent money mm -hmm. and a nice little two-week grind. You know, you do three, four rooms a night, two, three rooms a night for about two weeks, and you're in that town. Also, in that town is going to be somebody from somewhere else that's also in town knocking around. So mm -hmm. that's where your network starts to build. So I went from Atlanta to Chicago, from Chicago to New York, from New York to Detroit, went all around. And you didn't come back home? Didn't come home until almost Christmas. So it was a whole year? No, I just, I would, I would pop back home, pay rent, okay. you know, see my lady, see my daughter, you know, get back on the road. Get home, comedy club that never gave me an opportunity, called me. The feature that they first called was sick. Second feature they called was out of town. Third feature they called, couldn't get a ride. It was too last minute. God's plan. They called me. Hey, Black Ron, are you available to feature this weekend? No, the, the, the guy before me, he wasn't able to do it all weekend. That's what it was. Are you able to feature this weekend? Yeah. Um, six shows. You can do all weekend? Yeah. All right. Uh, first show is Thursday, 8 o'clock. Be here. You'll be featuring for Dick Gregory. Wow. Big. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.